Welcome back, everybody. My next guest tonight is an MSNBC analyst and New York Times best-selling presidential biographer. His latest book on the life and times of Jimmy Carter is called His Very Best. Please welcome to A Late Show, Jonathan Alter. John, good to see you. Hi, Stephen. Now, people out there don't know, but for reasons we don't have to get into right now, you were a person who was a great resource to me for years over at the Colbert Report. You would give us some perspective on what was happening politically frequently on that show. And, and you've got a real view of the history of politics in America. Have, have you ever seen anything like the debate we saw last night? No, it is completely unprecedented. It's also um, a, an extraordinarily embarrassing moment for our country. And I kind of ache for our country after seeing that. You know, the whole world is watching. And this man is, uh, you know, a menace to public health, a menace to our country, uh, a menace to democracy. And that's what the real issue is now, is that he's made it clear that he will not accept uh, the results of the election if they don't go his way. We have literally never seen anything like that in our whole history. George Washington, after his second term, he stepped down as president and that set the precedent really for the first time in the whole world of a peaceful transfer of power. After that, every election, there was a peaceful transfer of power. Even when it was extraordinarily close, went to the House of Representatives, there still was that transfer of power. Well, let's talk about a president who's much maligned during its, his term, and certainly his presidency has been maligned since, but he sort of invented the post-presidency, and that, that's Jimmy Carter. I'll put the book right over here. The book, as I said before, is called His Very Best. Um, do you think Carter is misunderstood? Uh, he's, he's completely uh, misunderstood. I mean, it, it, it starts with you know, this kind of lazy-minded assumption, which is very common and understandable, that he was a bad president and a great former president. In fact, he was a, a, an underrated, misunderstood president and, uh, a, you know, a, an inspirational uh, former president, but he hasn't had any levers of power, you know, to do, to make real change. He's helped eradicate diseases. He did some peacemaking. He's built houses, as people know. Uh, he's monitored elections overseas. All great work by the Carter Center. He revolutionized what former presidents do. But he did so much more when he was in office. The problem is that he was a, a political failure and a stylistic failure at a certain point. But I argue that even though he was a political failure and you know got his butt kicked by Ronald Reagan in 1980 and made a lot of mistakes, he was a substantive and far-sighted, even visionary success. Eight, uh, 14 environmental bills he signed. He signed more legislation than any president except for Lyndon Johnson since World War II. And many of them changed, many of these bills changed the country in fundamental ways. The press just wasn't paying attention to it. You know, I know I know you sat down uh, with the president uh, many times for this book. He, he cooperated with yeah. his biography. Yeah. What surprised you about the man? I know he's in his 90s now, but what, what yeah. did you not expect? Well, um, you know, I, I think a lot of it was just the modesty of his life um, and uh, the fact that, you know, uh, he, he and Rosalind, they sleep on a Murphy bed uh, when uh, they're in Atlanta. They sp spend most of their time in planes and in the past on the road, traveling to 120 different countries uh, doing good works. But, you know, in Atlanta, they sleep on a Murphy bed at the Carter Center. And, and you know, he cut the grass for a long time until quite recently at their church. And they're very active in, you know, local things. They church supper on paper plates. And then just things about their lives, like Mrs. Carter gave me the love letters that he wrote her from the Navy, which are very steamy. Really? And, and they are um, they are quite a bit beyond John and Ab Abigail Adams in their explicitness. Are they in the book? They are in the book. And I think and he just moved some paper. Like, we got some sex, we got some sexy peanut farmer in there's here. Some, yeah, and just also stuff I found out about him. Like at one point he went door to door as a missionary and he came upon a brothel and he tried to convert the madam, but he's not at all uh, intolerant of people who are not mm -hmm. as religious as he is. He became really good friends with mm -hmm. 
Greg Allman, uh, friendly with Bob Dylan. Uh, Hunter Thompson fell for him hard when he was running for president. And that, you know, Gonzo, Hunter Thompson helped make Carter president. So one of the reasons I wanted that Andy Warhol of him on the cover is that there was a time when he was very cool. And, and I think a younger generation is kind of rediscovering him now, um, in part because he is the un-Trump. Uh, his 96th birthday is tomorrow. Other than buying this brilliant biography of Jimmy Carter, how can people celebrate it? Well, first of all, thank you for the Colbert bump. You got I remember it. Remember that. You got um, it. So I think the way to honor him uh, is, you know, he is asking for people not to give right now to the Carter Center, but to give for COVID relief. Uh, there are a lot of countries that, you know, are in real danger uh, and don't have the resources that we have, even though we've suffered worse than any other major country. And, and also, he feels really strongly, uh, and because he's, he's monitored all these elections, about the integrity of elections. And I think he would urge people to be poll watchers, to uh, uh, you know, bring friends to vote for Biden, not just yourself. Maybe use the call tools so you can call into battleground states to get out the vote. And I think uh, the the greatest 96th birth, birthday uh, present that anybody could give him would be to work their butts off for Joe Biden and save our democracy. Well, the book is his very best. It's out now. The man is Jonathan Alter, everybody. When we come back, one of my writers heads out into the wilds of COVID parenthood. Stick around. Yeah.